time it motherfucking is. It's time to get this motherfucking Real Housewives of Atlanta recap done. Y'all know the deal. I have been waiting all motherfucking week for this motherfucking episode. Yes, I said motherfucker four times, my niggas. Your girl's been waiting on this damn episode. And I already started kind of sort of watching, as y'all know, I recap and watch at the same exact time. And y'all, I'm already tripping. So, y'all already know the deal. We watch this motherfucker and we recap it as we watch. Just FYI, before I get started, because I know I'm going to get asked about my lips. I'm rocking Uptown Mob by Milani. Bam, okay, on the bottom half, and I'm rocking Fashion Diva, Bam, by Milani on the top, boom, okay, because I know I'm going to get asked. I got my recap juice going already. <laughs> so let's get this motherfucker started. So we left off last week's episode, okay, with Miss Kenya Moore and Apollo having a little chit and chat about whatever the fuck happened with them when they were in L.A. And y'all already know how I feel about that shit. I, I gave y'all my rundown of how I felt. Kenya was talking a little bit in code and Apollo was trying to avoid whatever conversation she was trying to have all in last week's recap. So if you haven't checked it out, check it out down below or it'll be annotated all up and through here, okay? And now they having a little chit and chat. Nene, Portia, and Phaedra's ass walk in that motherfucker. So Phaedra walks up and the first thing she gonna ask is, so what's going on up and through here? Now let me tell you, if I was in a motherfucking position, my motherfucking ass would be just as heated, if not more heated than she is at this point. Keep in mind, it's 1.30 in the motherfucking morning in Mexico, okay? Everybody then just went off on their own corner, Peter over on the side, like, look, 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 look at this motherfucker, look at this motherfucker, right? And of course, Phaedra's like, this is some fucking bullshit. Now Apollo is gonna try to try to explain whatever the fuck bullshit conversation Kenya and Apollo were having, and you already know he got a special way of trying to express himself, because y'all already know the motherfucker don't know what the fuck he's ever talking about. So that nigga was like, you know, we just talking about how you know, you know, you know, we on this good vacation and shit. And you know, everybody wants to be bygones. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, what the fuck is your ass talking about? Did you just motherfucking say everybody want to be bygones and shit? What the fuck? Who the fuck uses that in real life? Like, what kind of vocabulary? What? Who the, who educated your motherfucking ass? Do you even know what the fuck comes out of your motherfucking mouth? This nigga said everybody want to be bygones and shit. I about straight up spit out my damn wine when he said that motherfucking shit. I don't even know if he knows what the fuck he says when he says shit. So why this nigga talking all kinds of stupidity, okay? Portia and Nene are like, hey, hey, y'all, what y'all doing? What's going on? And next thing you know, Apollo thinks his ass is saved, talking about he's saved by the motherfucking bell. So his ass gets the fuck up and walks away and walks over to the fellas who'd been sitting there idly by like some bitches watching the shit go down and shit. So while Apollo's over on the sidelines or whatever, you know, talking to Todd and Candy and shit, Kenya still brings her black ass over there talking about some, so uh, can we go ahead and call it a truce? Are we friends? Can we still be friends? I'm like, bitch, first and foremost, your motherfucking ass should have been talking to his motherfucking ass no way. And especially at not, not no nam 1.30 in the motherfucking morning when she's not there on vacation that she's on, okay? Secondly, Apollo's ass shouldn't have even entertained the conversation to motherfucking begin with because shit, the motherfuckers keep bringing this shit up for no damn reason. But here's my thing. You gonna still continue to keep having this motherfucking conversation with this nigga and Phaedra's right around the corner in the same motherfucking room obviously ticked y'all having this conversation to begin with? What kind of motherfucking bitch are you, okay? And then on top of that, Apollo's like, look, if you keep talking about the shit, then I'm gonna keep talking about the shit. I know this nigga did not say that if she continues to talk about this shit, that he's gonna continue to talk about this shit, nigga. That's shit should have been dead a long ass motherfucking time ago okay not only is Phaedra your motherfucking wife she's your motherfucking lawyer nigga you wouldn't be keep keying with Kenya's ass if she didn't represent your ass in the first motherfucking case you got yourself into okay so you need to be respectful of Phaedra's ass as your wife and your motherfucking representation and dead that motherfucking shit in the water. You don't need to have any kind of conversation with Kenya, nor do you need to be friends with a motherfucker that don't like your motherfucking wife, nigga. So Nene and Portia pull Apollo aside, okay? And the whole reason why they pulled his ass aside was to let him know how disrespectful it was that he was sitting there talking to Kenya's ass, well, you knowing damn well that Phaedra's right around the corner that he's married to Phaedra, okay? And that's disrespectful and it isn't about his ass, it's about Phaedra and how she feels about the whole situation. So meanwhile, back at the ranch, Phaedra's like, fuck this bullshit, I'm finna get the fuck out of here. 
here. I ain't fucking with this shit no more. I ain't trying to talk to y'all niggas. My black ass is tired. I'm finna go to take my black ass to bed. And she goes ahead and exits stage left and takes her ass back to her hotel room. So now this nigga says, I'ma go ahead and check up on my wife. And so he leaves, right? So he goes over to the hotel room where Phaedra's sitting outside the door because she ain't got no damn key because he has the motherfucking key or somebody has the motherfucking key. Shit. I feel bad for the girl. This is the first time I for real, for real, for real feel bad for the girl. She was just sitting out the door just looking all sad and solemn and shit. And this nigga gonna walk up on her and be like, What are you doing? Nigga, what the fuck do you think she doing? She mad at your motherfucking ass sitting outside her damn hotel room, nigga. Then this nigga gonna be like, So why'd you leave? She was like, nigga, I wanted to go to the bathroom. I had to pee. And this slow ass nigga gonna be like, I mean, you couldn't have possibly had to pee, you know what I'm saying? Because it was a restroom over there. Because you walked in there like you was ready to be juvial and have a good time. This nigga said juvial, my nigga. Okay, see, what I tell him earlier, I had said, just stay pretty. Don't open your mouth to fix this saying not a motherfucking thing. Your ass sounds dumb as a motherfucking box of rocks talking shit. This motherfucker said you was ready to be jovial and shit nigga. I cannot handle his ass no more. Then Phaedra's gonna let him know she ain't got no damn key for like the fourth motherfucking time, okay? And do you know this nigga left her ass up there talking about, well, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go have me some fun and left her ass with no motherfucking key talking about, yeah, I'll go ahead and let him know you ain't got no damn key, nigga. Wish a motherfucker do that shit to my ass. Let me tell you right the fuck now, okay? His motherfucking ass wouldn't be not nam near me in the motherfucking plane on the way back to the crib. No would he be sleeping in my motherfucking bed in the hotel room, okay? I wish my motherfucking husband would come up in there talking about some, yeah, get the key your motherfucking self after some bullshit that I done walked in on, nigga. Do that shit with another bitch and see how far that shit goes. So after that whole fiasco goes down, we gonna go ahead and head over to Kenya and Miss Lawrence and Peter and Cynthia, who I didn't even realize Cynthia's ass wasn't there, but I guess she done fell asleep in her room or whatever. So of course, you know, Peter, the new housewife, okay? He shows up with Cynthia and they go ahead to having conversations with Miss Lawrence and uh, and Kenya after Peter done told Miss Lawrence that he looked so great in his caftan or whatever the fuck he wants to call it. So then we go over to Phaedra's ass, right? Who now is with Apollo because Apollo done came over and tried to give her a rose. Okay, talking about a rose for your thought. Nigga, I know your ass didn't give her a motherfucking lily and call that motherfucker a rose and then be like a rose for thought. Nigga, it's a rose for your thoughts, okay? For your thoughts. Nigga, if you don't know what the fuck you saying, don't fucking try to say it. And then this nigga gonna be like, I have a medical question for your ass. Nigga, she is a motherfucking lawyer. You, of all people, should know that shit since she done represented your motherfucking ass trying to get get your ass to stay out of jail, okay? Don't be giving her no meta. Look, you don't give her no damn medical questions talking about my medula, medulla oblongata got a problem. I don't stretch my shit. Then we go over to Kenya, who's talking to Cynthia and Peter, trying to let her know, you know, what's going on since Cynthia wasn't there or whatever and how she done said she don't need no damn dick. She goes to the mailbox and the mailman asks her if she wants dick and she goes to Home Depot and them niggas to ask her if she wants some dick and that she ain't got no problems with dick, okay? So she's not trying to fuck Apollo. <laughs> bitch, bitch, bye. So we got a little bullshit ass scene coming up here, okay? So supposedly it's Phaedra's birthday or whatever in another week. And so I guess Apollo done talked to uh, Candy's ass to try to see if she could put together some kind of bullshit for her motherfucking birthday, okay? So all of everybody gets together or whatever and he starts to lead her in with her little blindfold on or whatever the fuck. And everybody's like, surprise, motherfucker, it's your motherfucking birthday. And uh, they proceed to go ahead and get their little party on at the wackest motherfucking birthday party in life. Man, look, the motherfucker had a motherfucker a pinata full of condoms to bust. So, it's the last night in Mexico, and of course, Kenya's got some bullshit up her damn sleeve. So, everybody gathers around wherever the fuck they normally go and sit down, wherever they done had dinner and shit. And I guess there's some chairs, some beanbag type chairs in a little semicircle formation, so they all sit their asses down. Now, they know some shit's finna go down, and y'all know we all knew that shit too, because Kenya had something to do with the shit. So, Kenya comes down twirling her little dress and shit, talking about how she gonna have a little couple's night, like similar to the one that Nene had that ended up being a big ass fiasco. And so she wanted to redo the couple's night and have questions the same way, but have it be less drama and you know, on some light and fluffy type shit so we can go back to Atlanta all at one accord. I was like, nigga, you know damn well what the fuck your ass is doing, okay? So now, 
They go ahead and they start pulling out the questions, okay? And now, first up, we have Portia's ass. So Portia goes ahead and gets her little question out, and her question is, do you like wild sex or do you like romantic sex, okay? So now this bitch gonna be like, okay, so I like wild sex, but I also like romantic sex. And this slow ass bitch gonna try to define what the fuck romantic sex is. She was like, romantic sex means like, I mean, like, you know, like with an older guy, like slow and old, but like slow. So as soon as she starts talking, the first couple of people that have to say some shit are Nene and Peter's ass, right? So Peter gets the fuck up and push her, pushes her ass back to the chair like, bitch, go, go get, get the fuck on with that shit. So of course, Nene's up next, and the question she gets is, what annoys you about another couple in the room, okay? Now, this is supposed to be the type of questions that's supposed to keep everybody in harmony, can you? Nigga, get the fuck out of here. Okay, so now, Nene gets that question, of course, and of course, decides to go ahead and start going in on Portia's ass because of what the fuck she said about older men or whatever the fuck. So she's upset talking about ignorance and how she feels. She just can't tolerate ignorance from certain people, so she uses Portia as an example, okay? Then the bitch goes on to talk about Candy's ass and the fact that Candy decided to tell her or to make it seem as though she's going through menopause because she's in her 40s and that she can't have no damn babies, okay? And Candy's ass is like, I wouldn't say ignorance, I would just say it's a misunderstanding. So then Candy goes ahead and lets her know that she don't even know how old she fucking is, right? So now Nene's gonna be like, I'm a young 40-something other, okay? Bitch, you don't see no kind of wrinkles or lines on my motherfucking face. And girl, this motherfucking Candy said, What are you doing at Botox? Man, my ass was done when she said that shit, okay? So now that whole stupid ass fiasco is done. I'm through talking about that damn scenario, okay? Okay, so now Kenya's gonna be like that. Now we're gonna go ahead and separate the men's from the women, and we're gonna go ahead and hash things out over here, and the men are gonna go over to my room, okay? So, meanwhile, back at the ranch, the men go over to Kenya's room, okay? Miss Lawrence, like, I ain't ever been with no men in a group or whatever, without no female companions or whatever, and they go to sitting down and shooting the shit, and of course, the first thing they started talking about was the whole situation with Kenya and Apollo, and how Peter was like, look, nigga, I was trying to watch out for your motherfucking ass, and, you know, Apollo was like, you know, I had that shit, you know, I'm a grown-ass man, and yada, yada, whoop, whoop, okay? And now we go back to the women who are now having a little powwow because Kenya wants to try to see if she can hash things out with whoever the fuck has any problems with each other, okay? So they gonna get to talking and eventually they gonna sit there and they gonna talk about uh, the, the Marlo situation which Nene refused to talk about, okay? And then when Nene shut her ass down, then she gonna go ahead and go on to Phaedra and be like, okay, let's go ahead and talk about the elephant in the room, okay? And Phaedra should have just never even entertained the conversation right then and there. Because to be completely honest, this whole situation, I truly believe at the end of the day, Phaedra boo-boo, <laughs> boo-boo, I know you angry at Kenya and you have every motherfucking right to be because Kenya be crossing all kinds of motherfucking lines. But nigga, I pray to the gods up in heaven above your motherfucking ass didn't sleep with that nigga that same night he left you in the cold with no motherfucking key in the room when he said he wanted to go back and go get him some more drinks after he done sat with Kenya's ass solo dolo in not nam video presence, okay? Because his ass was just as disrespectful as Kenya and in fact, more disrespectful because that's your motherfucking husband, my nigga, okay? So, I'm mad at the fact that you are angry at Kenya, but not angry enough at Apollo. So, y'all decided to have a little conversation on some high school, college type, young ass type shit, okay? So, y'all going back and forth. And Kenya had the unmitigated gall to say that that's not what your husband told me last night. I said, oh, hell no, bitch. See, when she said that, that was your cue to either clock her ass or get the fuck out of the room. The conversation should have never gone past that, okay? You like, we don't want to be friends with you, so you need to stop talking to my husband because we don't want to be friends. And now, you giving Kenya the power to be able to come back and say, yeah, Apollo done said something different, bitch. So, that's not what he had said to me last night. Not now, mother motherfucker in life should ever be able to tell you what the fuck your husband said last night, nigga, on not nam bit of level, okay? So, that conversation was just stupidity to me so now we go on to more stupidity in the other place which is kenya's little you know place her little room because now the men's is together and greg's been harboring some bullshit because i guess during the conversation with the questions he made sure to let 
Peter know, hey, I got something to holler at you about. It's been, you know, on my mind, so I'ma holler at you about it later, right? Cause you wanna talk, nigga. Okay. So now we on some bitch ass shit over in Kenya's room. Cause now Greg wants to go ahead and get all puffed up and get all upset, okay, with Peter because supposedly when the whole Kenya nonprofit organization thing went down, okay, and Nene came over and approached Peter, he felt Peter went and got all up in Nene's face and was trying to, you know, get all about all up in her face and talk shit and he felt some kind of way about that shit like nigga uh i hope and pray you never step to my wife again and now you saw in the flashbacks what the fuck went down nini walked up to peter and asked peter what his problem was and he answered the question so for one time you know i'm on peter's side with this shit because on some real shit he didn't walk up on nini like he was gonna steal on the bitch he just answered the question he was like look here's the deal i don't agree with the, what the fuck you just did it's a non-profit organization at the end of the day you could have been a little bit more respectful and kept it the fuck pushing he gave his fucking opinion at the end of the day she asked for the shit and on top of that they're friends it's not some random ass nigga asking you know what i'm saying or giving his opinion about some shit they've been friends for a minute and a half right okay so now greg's all getting ruffled up for no motherfucker fucking reason like i don't even know why the fuck he's even part of the equation part of me almost felt as though his ass was trying to start some shit just so he could make sure he has some relevance to the motherfucking plot because greg has been nothing but a minion this entire season for nini he's had nothing to say but a couple of random miscellaneous bullshit what look what he done helped the bed one day and that was it but other than that when the fuck do we hear from greg so when peter said oh yeah i know what the fuck you doing i was like nigga I think I know what he's doing too. He's trying to see if he can make sure he has a little job next season on the show as Nene's minion slash husband or whatever. But either way, now they're both getting on each other's shit. They're clashing, okay? And now Todd tries to step in and, you know, separate the shit. Greg's like, nigga, get off of me. Apollo's like, Todd, get the fuck out. Stay the fuck out of that shit because, you know, last time I done got myself in some shit. The first shit that he done said that made any kind of sense, okay? So keep your ass out the shit. And now all the girls are done talking being stupid like some young ass dumb ass motherfuckers they come over and realize that these niggas are about to argue and fight as well because greg and peter are all up in each other's face like they finna steal on each other which is some fucking bullshit over some dumb ass shit now nini has been holding on to some shit about peter for the longest now nini wants to go ahead and step in and say some shit to peter that his bitch assness is what she's got a problem with that his ass needs to stay out of girl business and stay the fuck out of them types of shits so stay in your motherfucking lane and now that's pretty much where they motherfucking left us at the end of the day that's pretty much how it was look honestly on some real shit there was so much buffoonery in this motherfucking episode I was like shit I don't know how much more we can talk about this shit because the fact that Greg and Peter just had an argument and almost came to blows over some dumb ass shit then in reality, really, for real, didn't happen the way Greg done said. It's some... Cr anyway, look, we gonna see what the fuck happened next episode because obviously now their friendships, okay, Cynthia, Nene, Peter, and Greg's friendships are questioned because of this whole scenario because they gotta go back to Atlanta, okay? So we already know there's some shit gonna go down. Then Marlo's gonna talk to Kenya. You know, y'all know they're gonna keep Marlo in the show for a minute here and uh, keep her somewhat relevant, okay? So I'm curious what the fuck's gonna happen to be completely real because I I'm just like, damn, everybody, everybody got problems this time, all right? Even Peter and Cynthia, Nene, and Greg, look, you know what it is. They done had this show on for too damn long this particular season, so now everybody hates each other. Anyway, next week, you're going to see another recap from your girl. I cannot wait to see what the fuck happens, but I have been waiting for this particular episode, and they did not disappoint with the fucking level of buffoonery in this shit right here. <sighs> anyway, y'all already know what to do. Thumbs up this video if you love seeing these recaps from your girl. Please let me know down below what the fuck you thought of every motherfucking thing. We already know Peter's the new Real Housewives of Atlanta. Real Housewife of Atlanta or whatever the fuck. Shit. He might as well, like I said last episode recap, he might as well go ahead and replace Cynthia because Cynthia's irrela fucking vent at this point, okay? But uh, let me know what y'all think down below. Thumbs up this video if you love seeing these videos from your girl. And as always, follow me on Twitter. Twitter.com forward slash socialize Sandy. Hit me up on my Facebook fan page or my Pinterest page. Those links are down below. Hit me up on my blog, the socialitelife.blogspot.com, and hit me up on Instagram at socialize Sandy. And y'all already know I love y'all, and I will see y'all in the next video. Love y'all. Bye.